One in nine people have diabetes, and nearly half don't even know it yet. I'm a senior doctor with over 15 years of experience, and in this story, you'll see how easy it is to miss the early signs. Watch to the end for the answers that could protect you or someone you love. He's 45, works long hours, loves sweet tea, but lately, something's off. His body is trying to tell him something, but it's doing it quietly. Eight warning signs are hidden in his story. Can you spot them? This is Imran. He's a regional sales manager, smart, reliable, always on the move. He spends his week driving from client to client, closing deals, managing a team, and constantly juggling targets. He's also a husband, a father of two, and a man who hasn't had a proper rest in over a decade. His days start with a sugary tea and a croissant from the petrol station. Then it's calls, traffic, more tea, and a vending machine lunch if there's time. He tells himself he'll get back to the gym one day. But right now, there's no time for anything except work and responsibility. Lately, though, something's changed. He's been unusually tired, not just sleepy, bone tired. Even when he sleeps in, he wakes up feeling like he hasn't rested at all. He tells himself it's just the stress, or maybe the mattress, or maybe he's just getting older. Last weekend, he nearly missed his son's winning goal at football, not because he was distracted, but because he had to run to the toilet again. It's been happening more and more, especially at night. He's always thirsty and constantly needing to go. Still, he laughs it off. Must be the tea, he says. I need to cut back. But something about it nags at him. That night at dinner, he felt it again, that itch behind his knee. It's been on and off for a few weeks, not painful, just annoying. He scratches discreetly under the table while trying to follow the conversation. His wife asks him a question and he snaps, can we not do this now? The table goes quiet. She doesn't say anything, but he knows he overreacted. He doesn't feel like himself lately, short-fused, irritable, easily overwhelmed. Later, he takes off his socks and sees the blister he got from his new shoes. Still red, still open, it's been more than a week. That's weird. Usually things like this heal quickly. He makes a mental note to keep an eye on it, then forgets about it. Monday morning, he's back at his laptop. He increases the font size again. Lately, everything looks a little blurry. He wonders if he needs a new prescription, or maybe it's just eye strain. Either way, he's been getting headaches and squinting more than usual. He opens his drawer and pulls out a chocolate bar. He's been craving sugar more than normal and it gives him a quick lift. But then comes the crash and the yawning fatigue returns. So he makes another tea with sugar just to push through the next hour. At 3am, he wakes up drenched in sweat. His stomach is cramping. There's a strange metallic taste in his mouth. He stumbles to the bathroom, then back to bed. His wife wakes up, alarmed. Imran, this isn't normal. You need to see a doctor. He tries to brush it off, but she's right. Something doesn't feel okay. They book a GP appointment the next day. The doctor listens carefully, asks a few questions, orders some blood tests. Imran doesn't think much of it. He's just tired, probably needs to drink more water. The results come back the next day. The doctor calls him in. Imran, she says gently. Your blood sugar is dangerously high. You have type 2 diabetes. The words hang in the air. Imran is silent. He doesn't understand how, when, the thirst, the fatigue, the constant urination, the cravings, the blurry vision, the slow healing, the irritability. It all suddenly makes sense. All the warning signs had been there, but he'd ignored them. So how many warning signs did you notice? Let's go through them. 1. Feeling tired all the time, even after a full night's sleep. 2. Going to the toilet more often, especially at night. 3. Being constantly thirsty. 4. Having dry or itchy skin. 5. Mood changes, like becoming more irritable or emotional. 6. Wounds taking longer to heal than normal. 7. Blurred vision or trouble focusing your eyes. 8. Increased hunger, sugar cravings, or sudden weight changes. If you noticed even a few of those, you're already thinking like a doctor. But here's the thing. Type 2 diabetes doesn't always announce itself loudly. It creeps in slowly, sometimes over years. And because the symptoms seem minor, just fatigue here, a bit of thirst there, it's easy to miss. 
Many people don't realise they have it until complications develop. So what exactly is type 2 diabetes? It's a condition where your body becomes resistant to insulin, the hormone that helps control blood sugar, or stops producing enough of it. This causes sugar to build up in the blood instead of being used for energy. Over time, high blood sugar can damage your organs, nerves and blood vessels. Left untreated, diabetes can lead to serious complications, heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, nerve damage and blindness. But with the right care, these risks can be reduced dramatically. You might be wondering, what causes it? There isn't one single cause, but some common risk factors include being overweight, having a sedentary lifestyle, eating lots of processed foods, having a family history of diabetes, or being over the age of 40. Some ethnic groups, including South Asian, Black African and Caribbean communities, are also at higher risk. The good news is, type 2 diabetes is often preventable. Small changes make a big difference. Start by cutting back on added sugars and refined carbs. Swap out sugary drinks for water. Eat more fibre. Whole grains, vegetables and legumes help keep your blood sugar steady. Stay active. Even a daily 30-minute walk can help your body use insulin more effectively. Weight loss, even a small amount, can reduce your risk significantly. So can regular sleep, managing stress and getting checkups if something feels off. You don't need to overhaul your life overnight. Start small, one habit at a time, one better choice each day. If you've been diagnosed, you're not alone. Millions of people live full, healthy lives with type 2 diabetes, including Imran. With the support of his doctor and dietitian, he made changes. He swapped his croissant for oats, switched tea for herbal infusions, took walks during lunch. He even got the whole family involved. They started cooking together, shopping smarter and eating more whole foods. It wasn't easy. There were setbacks. But the difference in how he felt was undeniable. He had energy again. He was sleeping better. He lost weight. His mood improved. And most importantly, his blood sugar stabilised. So let's finish with a few common questions people ask when it comes to diabetes. Can I reverse type 2 diabetes? In some cases, yes, with significant lifestyle changes, particularly weight loss and increased activity. Some people are able to bring their blood sugar levels back into a normal range without medication. This is sometimes called remission, but it's not a cure and it requires ongoing effort to maintain. Is it true that only overweight people get diabetes? No. While weight is a factor, even people with a normal body mass can develop type 2 diabetes, especially if they have a genetic predisposition or lead a sedentary lifestyle. What's the difference between type 1 and type 2? Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the body attacks its own insulin-producing cells. It usually starts in childhood or young adulthood and requires insulin for life. Type 2 diabetes is more common, often develops later in life and is largely influenced by lifestyle factors. What happens if you ignore diabetes? Ignoring high blood sugar levels can lead to serious complications over time, including heart disease, nerve damage, foot ulcers, vision loss, kidney damage and even amputations. The earlier it's detected and managed, the better the outcome. When should you see a doctor? If you're experiencing any of the symptoms we've discussed, persistent fatigue, frequent urination, excessive thirst, blurry vision, slow healing wounds or mood changes, it's worth getting your blood sugar checked. A simple finger prick or lab test could give you answers. How often should blood sugar be checked? If you're at risk, your doctor might recommend a yearly check. If you've been diagnosed, it depends on your treatment plan, but many people monitor it daily or weekly especially if using medications or insulin. What's the takeaway? Your body is always talking to you, but it rarely shouts. Most of the time, it whispers. If you learn to listen to those whispers, the quiet changes, the small shifts, you might just catch something early enough to change the course of your life. Be curious, be proactive, and if something feels off, don't wait, because the earlier you know, the more power you have to do something about it. And that's exactly what saved Imran. Now he's not just surviving, he's thriving. And so can you.
Thank you for watching and well done if you have made it to the end of this video. It shows you truly care for your health. If you have enjoyed watching this, be sure to check out this video on the top left on more health advice told through a real life story. See you next time.